If you're interested in learning how to create a feature flag using Optimizely feature experimentation, then you, my friend, are in the right place. Now, the unique selling point of feature experimentation is that it combines feature flagging and server-side experimentation all within a single bit of code. Now, this means that if you're a developer, you can release code quicker. And if you're a product owner, you can test that feature to make sure it actually works. Now, there's a few interesting things to know about feature experimentation, which I'll tell you along the way. So if this sounds good to you, stick around. The first question to answer is, will this feature flagging tool support the programming languages that you need it to? Now, in terms of Optimizely, it has 19 SDKs. So we have SDKs for Android, C Sharp, Go, Flutter, JavaScript, both Node and the browser. We also have PHP, Python, React, React Native, Ruby, and Swift. Now, on top of that, if you want to do feature flagging in the edge, they also support Akamai, AWS, Cloudflare, Fastly, and Vercel. Then if you have microservices, there's optimize the agents. And finally, they have a REST API. So within this video, I'm going to show you how you can implement the JavaScript SDK. And the first thing we need to do is install the optimize the package within our project. OK, so the first thing I probably should point out is that in order to use feature flagging with Optimizely, you'll need an account and this will cost you some money. So you need to get contact with Optimizely if you don't have access. Now, in order to install any of the SDKs, my recommendation is that you come over to the docs.developers.optimizely.com website because everything is documented here. And if you go in the sidebar, scroll down the bottom, you can see that they've got the SDK reference guide down here. Now, just in terms of feature experimentation and JavaScript, they have a browser version, a node version, and they also have a React SDK. Now, if you're using Angular, Vue, Vanilla JavaScript, or some other framework like Svelte, then you have to use the default JavaScript SDK. Now, if you're using React or Next.js or Gatsby, then you can use the React SDK if you want to. Now, the React SDK is built on top of the JavaScript SDK. However, it also provides additional higher order components and it also has some hooks. So it'll make your code base a little bit cleaner. With that covered, how do we install this SDK? Unsurprisingly, you can install the Optimizely SDK via NPM. So you want to make sure that you find the Optimizely JavaScript SDK that's used for Optimizely feature experimentation. And installing it is very simple. All you need to do is an NPM install at Optimizely dash Optimizely dash SDK. Alternatively, if you want to install the React SDK instead, you'll just use an at Optimizely slash React SDK. Now, this covers the JavaScript SDKs. If you want to use another SDK, typically it's just a case of going to the package manager of your programming language, search for Optimizely, and you should find the package there. Install it, off you go. With the SDK installed, before you can actually write a feature flag, it's really important that you understand how flags are updated. So, this architecture diagram should hopefully elaborate this. Now, what you'll do is go into the Optimizely UI, you'll create your feature flag, you'll create some variables, you'll update things. And whenever anyone comes into the UI and updates something, a file called the data file will get generated or updated. And the data file is basically the brains of the operation. So within this file, it's going to contain all the experiments, all the feature flags, personalization groups, everything that the SDK needs in order to do feature flagging. So the really important thing to take away is that as long as the SDK has a copy of the data file, then it doesn't need to talk to Optimizely whatsoever. And all the code to decide if someone needs to be added into an experiment or a feature flag, it's all in the SDK and it's all made based on that data file. And it's definitely worth highlighting that this data file architecture that Optimizely uses is very different compared to the majority of feature flagging tools in the marketplace. Now, most tools in the marketplace use something called a streaming flag, and this diagram shows how the streaming architecture works. So you basically still have your UI on your API. You still have an SDK. However, the difference is that the SDK and the API talk using something like a WebSocket. 
And whenever you update the UI or the API here, a socket's request is sent and the code is updated. So this means that there's a constant connection between SDK and the API. It also means there's always some little bit of network latency. So actually it's a bit longer compared to the zero latency that you can get from Optimizely, which is a very nice touch in my opinion. Now, the only thing that you really need to consider about the data file is how often do you want your feature to be updated? Because if this data file doesn't get updated, if you make a change in the UI, your code isn't going to reflect that change. Now, when it comes to getting the data file, each one of the SDKs automatically will basically pull back to Optimizely and update the data file every five minutes. And this could be customizable. The alternative approach is to make a fetch request and for you to call the Optimizely CDN directly and then you can get the JSON file and pass it into the SDK yourself. And the final mechanism to update this data file is to listen in to the Optimizely webhook and then write some code to update the data file yourself. So we have these three different methods and you might be wondering which one's the best. Well, it all kind of depends on what you're trying to do. Now, most people will go for polling because it's simple. Now, the great thing about polling is it's very quick, zero latency, zero network requests. The only downside is that it might take five to 10 minutes for your feature to change after you make a change in the UI. And from my experience, most companies, this is fine. Now, if you need things to work a little bit quicker, you can call the CDN. However, the only issue is you're making a network request. So it's probably going to take a little bit longer for your page or your app to load because it is making a network request. Finally, the webhook is brilliant. However, you do have to write code to manage things yourself. But I think the great thing about feature experimentation is that you get to choose which mechanism is best for your particular feature, which is the bit that I really like about it, and I prefer it over a streaming flag. You're now ready to create your first feature flag, and you'll do that within the Optimizely dashboard. So you can access this dashboard through a browser going to app.optimizely.com and logging in with your username and password. Now, once you get in here, you're going to need to create a brand new project. So within the app here, you can see that we've got projects. Clicking on this, we can do create new project. Clicking on that is then going to open up our screen. Now from the screen, you'll basically have two options. Now, if you're using Optimize the Web, the client side tool, you're going to see these modules. If you're using feature experimentation, you're going to see this option and basically click on create new feature experimentation project. Clicking on the feature experimentation option is going to launch the create project dialog. And from here, you can give your project a name. Now, it's also worth pointing out that it's also possible in 2023 to create a secure environment. Now, when you create secure environments, you're going to need to use an access token in order to access the data file from your code. Now, in order to get going with a new feature flag, you can see that there's a create new flag tab right here. So click on that and then give your feature a name. So I'm going to call mine feature one. Now, one thing to point out is that as I'm creating a name here, you can see that the key is being auto generated below. And this key here is a thing that you're going to need to use in your code. After creating a new feature, the first thing that I always do is make sure that it's turned on. And the reason for this is that when you're trying to implement in code, when it's turned off, odd things can happen that can make you look like a fool when you're trying to debug. OK, so we've got our feature and it's appearing within our flag list. Clicking on this is going to open up the rule set tab. Now, in order to turn on the feature in the left hand pane here, you can see that we've got a kill switch. So clicking on the off button is going to turn it on. Now you can see that my flag is turned on and we're ready to implement this feature in the code. So we now have everything that we need in order to create our first feature flag which is exciting times. Now I'm going to create my feature flag within a Next.js website, and I'm not going to show you how to set up Next.js in this video. There's plenty of tutorials online if you want to do that. Now I've created a new component within my pages folder called example. And remember that we installed the Optimizely SDK. Now it's time to use it and we want to use the create instance. Now within a create instance, we can pass in some props and the prop that we want to pass in is the SDK key. Getting the value for this SDK key is done inside the Optimizely UI. 
So go to settings. We can see that we can then get the data file SDK key here. What you need to do is copy this value, go back to our code, and then we want to paste this in as the SDK key jobs again. The next step is to create a user context, and we're doing that on line 14 here. Now, the important thing to remember here is that whenever you're doing a feature flag, an experiment, or a progressive rollout, you'll need to target a specific user. And in order to target a specific user, you're going to need to pass in a user ID. Now, in case you're wondering where this user ID comes from, the simple answer is it's up to you. Now, because Optimizely is used by thousands of clients, because it can be used on websites, mobile apps, there's no one easy way for Optimizely to automatically generate a user ID for you and then store it in state. So basically, it's going to be left to you to decide how you want to create this user ID. Now, if you're on a website, you might just want to create a cookie with a random ID. But the point is that this ID needs to be persistent across requests. This means that when we switch back to our code, line 16 here will hopefully make more sense. So when we're creating our user context, you can see that we're passing in this user ID. Now, in reality, your user ID is probably going to be a GUID or it could be an integer, something like that. However, you need to provide this and it needs to be the first pram here. Simple. Now, another important thing to point out about this code is on ready. So when we're calling the data file, this will happen within create instance. However, it will take a fraction of a second for the data file to update before you can create the user context. So on ready will make sure that you don't try and create a new user context before the data file has actually been loaded in. Now, the next bit is to create our feature flag. So again, you can see that I'm using on ready just to make sure that we don't use the context before it's been created properly. And then in order to decide if a feature flag is turned on, we can use this decide method. Now, within decide, we need to pass in a key. And the key is found within Optimizely itself. So when we go back to our flags, remember that we created our feature one with a key of feature one. So if we copy this key, we're going to paste it in here. Now, this line here is going to automatically, with zero latency, tell us if this user here has been added into feature one. And we can get the result of the decision by calling dot enabled on it. So we've passed in our flag, we've got our enabled status, and then for me, I'm adding this into a hook. So you can see here, I'm passing in the classic React use effect and new state. And you can see that I've got my is feature enabled, render is featured enabled. Obviously, you can call these whatever you want to do. And then within my use effect hook, you can see that I'm doing render is feature enabled, setting it by passing in this state. And then within my code, I can toggle on my feature, just doing my simple is feature enabled, this thing here. And then if it's on, I'm going to be good for gold. OK, so that covers the basic steps of creating a feature flag with an optimizely feature experimentation. And the good news is, is that now that you've created that flag, it's also possible to perform progressive rollouts and targeted deliveries on it. It's also possible to do experimentation on your flag without having to write much more code. Now, I want to keep this video short and simple, so we're going to finish here. However, I'm going to record a video next week on how to do progressive delivery and experimentation with Optimizely Feature Experimentation. Now, if you're looking at this in the future, then the link to that video should be on screen right now. Otherwise, dial in next week, hit subscribe, hit like, so you can see that video because it's going to take your server-side experimentation game to the next level. So with that said, adios, and until next week, happy coding.